Okay, let me start. And let me put up the share screen and then I'll, well, let me, uh, let me uh, share screen. Okay. Okay. Good evening, and thank you for uh, joining us tonight for our uh, fireside chat. Uh, I am uh, Donald Nisbet, retired uh, Navy captain, and on behalf of the NNOA Transition Assistance Team, I'd like to thank you for joining us. The uh, NNOA veterans volunteer on the Transition Assistance Team and offer a plethora of experiences in nonprofit, profit, government, entrepreneurship, and academia. We're fortunate to have senior executives from a variety of professional backgrounds who have volunteered to share their experiences and advice in support of NNOA members facing transition. Leaving the military can be an incredibly intimidating experience, especially if service is all you've known for most of your adult life. Knowing what obstacles lie ahead can help you avoid pitfalls, and manage expectations. Tonight, we are honored to have Andrew Bucket Harold. He's the founder and managing uh, member of A. Harold Associates, a firm that designs and develops world-class training programs for all federal agencies. Andy founded the firm in 2003, and he continues to be heavily involved in the business, focusing his efforts on strategic planning, business development, and growth industries. Under his leadership, AHA has grown from a home-based office to an 18,000 square foot facility with employees working throughout the United States. In August, 2007, Andy obtained his Small Business Administration 8A certification, allowing the company to experience rapid growth in the federal market space. In 2009, the SBA chose Andy Harold as the district, state of Florida, and regional four winner of its Entrepreneurial Success Award. In 2010, Inc. Magazine ranked AHA 182 out of the top 500 fastest growing private companies in the U.S., growing more than 1,500% in three years. Andy graduated from Oberlin College Conservatory in 1990 with a Bachelor of Music a degree in Piano Performance. Following graduation, I first met Andy in Aviation Officer Candidate School down in Pensacola. And he uh, served in the, Navy, uh, the Navy's flight program as a Naval Aviator for 11 years on active duty and nine years in the US Navy Reserves, completing tours in HSL 42, HSL 60, as a uh, SH-60 Bravo pilot and a staff tour at Sinkus Nav Ewer in London. He completed 20 years of service and retired from the military as a Lieutenant Commander in 2010. He resides in Jacksonville, Florida. So please, uh, on behalf of the Transition Assistance Team, I'd like to introduce Andy Harrell. 
Well, Donald, uh, thank you so much uh, for that uh, warm welcome. I'd like to thank uh, you and your uh, NNOA uh, TAP team members. Uh, it's an honor to uh, be here this evening uh, with you. And as everyone mentioned, it's kind of a, a fireside chat. Again, um, as Donald mentioned, uh, 11 years active and then nine years in the reserves. Um, you know, that, that big time, that question came up, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, after that uh, second tour, and uh, I had the opportunity. Um, the U.S. Navy was uh, trying to get me to stay. Uh, they thought uh, they wanted me to be admiral material. I, I didn't agree with them, and uh, they said, uh, you know, we want to even throw you the uh, jet bonus to uh, stay around, and I, I got really scared because I was like, if they're trying to give uh, helicopter guys the jet bonus, what's going on? Uh, out there. So I opted uh, not to uh, take that bonus. Uh, I uh, left the uh, military uh, in 2000 uh, and then uh, joined the private sector. Um, but I then uh, joined the U.S. Navy Reserves. And that was the best thing I could have done because that allowed me to keep uh, in the community. It allowed me to stay connected. And it also helped me uh, get my uh, Second job. So I know that uh, each and every one of you all is working on some sort of transition, um, whether it's uh, after 20 years of, or 30 years of service or uh, after a couple of tours. Again, um, I got that uh, assistance uh, by networking with my uh, college alumni. Uh, that helped me get uh, my first position uh, in the uh, internet world. Uh, back in uh, 2000. And then uh, my second position I got through uh, being in the reserves. And uh, that helped me connect and get hired uh, as a defense contractor. Uh, after I got hired as a defense contractor, I then uh, recognized that uh, being in the civilian marketplace uh, was not the same as being uh, in the military. Uh, that camaraderie uh, changed and the, it, the, there's a different bottom line, you know, uh, the bottom line uh, in the military is service uh, to the nation and the bottom line in the corporate world is uh, service to the profit center of the owner. And uh, that was a big change for me. And so um, I recognized as being an employee that uh, I needed to keep uh, my eyes about me, heads about me, looking around to make sure I was safe, my family was safe. Um, and then uh, after a couple of years in the private sector, um, they almost laid me off. And so, as you can imagine, having 10 years of a solid paycheck and then, you know, every two weeks having to be in a situation where you could uh, be laid off. And so, um, I decided to uh, start my own business, A. Harold & Associates, uh, back in 2003, but I kept my day job for another four years while I worked on uh, developing the business. And so, um, again, uh, what I want to, I want to be here for you all this evening. I want you all to ask your questions. I want you all to uh, tell me where you're at, you know, tell me uh, what you're thinking about. Um, ask me any question. Uh, I'm open uh, to, uh, you know, whatever, uh, questions you may have. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to see if I'm going to kick this back to Donald to see, you know, if we're going to go around the room to see who's here or, uh, how, how you want to run it. Over. Yeah, thanks. Um, so one of the things I'll ask is, uh, since we have a small group, uh, the whole idea is that, uh, with this format, you know, you can just either raise your hand or submit questions in chat. But like Andy said, he's got the experience in the reserves, um, obviously small business, government contracts. So uh, the the objective tonight is for the time remaining. You know, he can tell you his story, but at the same time, this is an opportunity to pick his brain. So if I can ask, I'm just gonna pull this up here. As I call you out, if you wouldn't mind unmuting and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, we have members of the uh, transition assistance team, the core members. So as you look around the screen, if you don't uh, hear me calling them by name, 
you know, they're part of the team and we talk uh, often. So let me start with uh, Pat Lewis. I can't believe you calling me out. Anyway. <laughs> shy. Um, the meetings. <laughs> a, a lot of you guys uh, know me. I'm a longtime member of uh, NNOA since uh, 1991. Um, I got commissioned in 1990 in the Marine Corps through the MESEP program. So I had 10 years enlisted, and then I did uh, 20 years as an officer retiring. Uh, in 2010 as a lieutenant colonel. And um, during enlisted, I was uh, in finance. And then as an officer, I was public affairs. And my day job now allows me to do both of those. I'm a, a financial advisor with uh, First Command. And uh, I'm so glad somebody told me to go to an NNOA meeting way back when I didn't know what it was. It was a, a major and I, I thought, okay, the major said go, so I need to go. And I, I'm glad I did because I credit uh, making it to Lieutenant Colonel with the, the mentors and uh, different people that I met uh, in the in, in, in a way that steered me uh, in, in that direction. So when I retired in 2010, my goal was to never work again. I'm like, I don't work for 30 years. I'm not gonna do anything else. Uh, but then when this opportunity came along, uh, I couldn't pass it up because I still get to work with the military. I get to you know, talk to them about finances, budgeting, a lot of things that our uh, young troops and young officers don't know and, and can benefit from. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Derek. Good evening, all. Uh, Derek Oliver. Uh, 27-year Marine, just retired last year, a uh, longtime member of NNOA. Uh, I came in just to see, you know, what you all offer and what I could learn as I envelop this whole transition mindset here and envelop this retiree life. Uh, currently working as a program manager for Oracle, so I couldn't sit at home too long. Had to find something to do with my time. Look forward to learning from you all. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lloyd Mack. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Captain Lloyd Mack, uh, call sign Chile, uh, born and raised from Pensacola, um, entering my 30th year of Naval service, uh, going terminal uh, in July. Effective retirement date will be November 1st. Uh, so a uh, life member of uh, NNOA, um, happy to be here to learn uh, what uh, pitfalls there that exist during the transition and uh, hopefully uh, turn around and help someone else in the future. Over. Awesome, thank you. And then uh, Stephen Herrera. Hey, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for um, inviting me to this forum. Uh, I'm uh, a Marine major right now, active duty. I've been in for just under 26 total years. Uh, I've got some reserve time in there, prior enlisted time. I was uh, enlisted infantry. I uh, did some time on Marine Security Guard duty embassies worldwide. Uh, I uh, became a commission officer in 2005, and I uh, went into the pilot pipeline, uh, flew CH-46s, MV-22s, uh, also did a fact tour in there. And uh, for about the last five to six years, I've been in uh, various staff officer billets, uh, and I'm currently in uh, Central Command at, down in Tampa on an individual augment tour. And then my time here is up in about a week. And uh, as far as my timeline goes uh, for retirement, uh, I, I was planning on staying in, uh, but uh, did not get the uh, you know, uh, selections for Lieutenant Colonel uh, twice in a row. So uh, I'm, I have to retire by law uh, by July 1st. So I've set that as my retirement date. And I just completed TAP last week uh, everything was a fire hose and I need all the help that I can get and uh, tried to clean up my LinkedIn profile as much as I can. Still working on that, but uh, went ahead and joined the NNOA group. Uh, I think it was last week and this uh, the invite to this popped up. Uh, so I'm looking forward to what everybody all has to say. Um, and I, I thought I was a lifetime member of uh, NNOA, uh, but I think 
I may have messed up the, uh, the billing or something like that a couple of years ago when I was with 2MEF. So I'm going to reach out to the administrators and, and figure that out for, for billing uh, to see if uh, I could reactivate my membership. Um, quick story about my NNOA uh, interest and, and uh, eventual uh, sign up for NNOA. Uh, I had gotten passed over for major on my first look and I was searching all over trying to find uh, what I need to do to get selected on my second look. Couldn't find anything uh, locally. Nobody was willing to help me in my command. Uh, but I, I ended up uh, finding a PowerPoint slideshow on a Google search that had a very detailed explanation of, of uh, officer career management and uh, the performance evaluation system. And it was uh, produced by a group called NNOA. And uh, I, I found the website, started taking interest in it. And I attended the first annual symposium that, that I, or my first annual symposium in 2017, the summer over in San Diego. Uh, pretty excited to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, I will tell you just a personal story. Um, I'm uh, 14 months retired. Uh, and uh, my first meeting with this group, uh, I can tell you was very influential in me getting my uh, post-retirement job. So um, as a result, this is me paying it forward, <laughs> being being in charge of the group. And one of the goals that we have for this year is to help uh, specifically you, Major, and uh, Captain Mack, um, as you kind of navigate this journey. Um, and so the idea tonight is you've got decade, you got uh, over a century of experience in the service as well as out of the service. So um, this, this resource from this group doesn't necessarily have to end tonight. So um, if you go to the website uh, or definitely if you wanna put your information in the chat, we can reach out and I can, uh, I can offer, you know, fairly recent experience of transitioning after 31 years. Um, and, you know, Andy's, again, we're lifelong friends. He's got this success story. I spent all my time in government, but uh, <laughs> he didn't. So we came here to hear him. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Andy. So again, uh, uh, Biscuit, thank you so much. Again, um, I think that uh, for everyone here, and again, especially Stephen and uh, Captain Mack, uh, you know, you all have uh, taken that step of uh, what this is all about. What this is all about, even uh, in the military and out of the military, is about a relationship building. And and you all are here this evening to uh, continue that relationship building and continue your network and expand your network. And uh, just like Biscuit mentioned, you know, coming to this organization or Stephen coming to this organization to help find out about his career. Again, everyone is here trying to uh, relate, make relationships, uh, help each other out and continue because again, this is, I mean, this is how business works. I mean, again, that's how I got my first contract. It, you know, you get contracts because you know people, you get contracts because people want to do business with you. You get jobs because people want to work with you. They like your energy. They like your, how you organize. They like uh, how you give back, how you work with others. And again, I think that that is what is so important um, about this evening and about how this uh, series is going and how everyone is relating to each other. And, and again, how everyone is trying to help each other. I mean, again, you know, I did it a certain way. You all are doing it different ways. There's no right way. Uh, but I think that as you all come up with questions, uh, come up with concerns, uh, you know, one of the biggest things is, or the hardest things to do is to figure out what you want to do. Uh, in my situation, I made the transition to get out. So once you make that transition to get out, now you have to support yourself um, and your family. And how do you do that? And, you know, who's going to pay you your worth and how do you figure out what your worth is? And you know, how do you translate, you know, detachment deployment on small ship to, you know, program project manager, human resources and those different uh, things that go on in the civilian world. Uh, but again, you all know how to operate. 
you've been operators uh, your entire careers and being an operator is, you know, you've got 90% of it lit. And then you just have to decide what area of this uh, world you want to work in. And so, um, again, I want you all to ask more questions. I want you all to, um, you know, what is on your mind? What is uh, of concern? What is keeping you all up at night? What is, uh, you know, what's your family asking you? What are you unsure about? So, uh, you know, I just want to talk uh, with you all and, and, and let me see if I can be of assistance or, like you said, someone else from the group can jump in as well. Over. You know, the first, uh, this is Captain Barnes, Tony Barnes, uh, 81 Naval Academy guy, P3s uh, for three tours. Uh, the best one, of course, being commanding officer of BP-16 in Jacksonville, 31 years uh, to get to 06 and retire. And Stephen, I want to say this right out of the box. I feel pretty confident saying this, that had someone steered you early on in your career to NNOA, I have no doubt in my mind, your career would be longer than it ended up being. Because I'm convinced that I stayed around and made 06 and, and commanded because of NNOA. I concur. And the mentorship and the, the contacts made, uh, I can assure you, I never would have met my sister, Pat Williams, I mean, Pat Lewis. I never would have met Chili, Chili Mac outside of the NNOA umbrella. You, 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 it, I, it's just amazing what this organization can do. And, and Andy said it right, is a lot of this is about relationship building. And so you need to go back to your Rolodex. If you're old enough to know what a Rolodex is, I don't, I'm not sure. Go back to your Rolodex and find those old COs, those old department heads, those, those old uh, um, uh, colleagues, many of which may be in, in hiring positions around the US. And those relationships that you've built with them, hopefully they were positive, <laughs> you know? <laughs> If, if it wasn't one of your favorite CEOs, I don't know how, how willing they were to be to help you, but you got to find those colleagues and the importance of those relationships you built early on are going to pay in spades. Because when I transitioned out, my last tour was the Chief Diversity Officer at Naval Academy. Um, it was a classmate of mine from the Naval Academy that I met at a class luncheon who eventually turned me on to the hiring manager that hired me as the diversity and inclusion program manager at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission when I left service. And, and I mean, this lady came up to Annapolis, we had lunch, that was basically the interview. She hired me off a resume. I never interviewed, I never even went to the agency until the day I showed up to go to work there. So I gotta tell you, there's a lot of great people in NNOA, reach out, use the resources. And like I said, those relationships that you have built. You said you've got some enlisted time, some reserve time, active duty time. Man, you are a wealth of contacts that you need to go at this point. This is where you build that. And, and uh, I got to tell you, uh, once again, Andy hit it out of the park. There is no single right way. I mean, I also would tell you to go to the transition assistance part of the NNOA website. And all of our fireside chat speakers, we record and hang them on that site. So go back and look at Admiral Grooms and look at uh, Cynthia Miller and, and look at all those previous speakers and, and just be a sponge. And, and I feel good that you are a lot better than we always sell ourselves short when we leave the military and we're just looking for a job and we settle but I guarantee you there's somebody out there willing to pay you a whole bunch of money for your experiences you've seen this far in your Naval career, your Marine Corps career. So uh, best of luck to you. Um, I, feel, I feel good about what you're gonna experience. It can be scary, but it can be a lot of fun too. I mean, you got the world at your fingertips. Anything you want, you can have. Think of it that way. So Stephen, I, I would jump in. Thank you. 
I would jump in the echo from the good captain. Uh, I will tell you right now, uh, as somebody who just retired last year, matter of fact, almost to the day, March 4th was my retirement ceremony last year. And I will tell you, the contacts of NNOA and being on LinkedIn has really paid me dividends. I, I, I mean, literally, that has helped me. And like you said, I would have never knew people like himself, Pat Lewis, who helped groom me up, but it also taught me how to network. I will tell you right now, that helped me to foster those relationships. And don't be shy about it. Now, one thing I could uh, I'll tell you, be honest about it. Hey, listen, I'm reaching out. I'm starting my transition. Don't be trying to sugarcoat it and beat around the bush. Just be, hey, John, I, I know I haven't talked to you in some years, but hey, I'm starting this transition and I'm trying to now further my civilian network connection. And, that, and that's what you're doing. Be honest about it. And I felt for me, that has paid dividends for me. And I will tell you, life has become easier on the outside, brother. And so, Andy, the one question I would have for you is if I Thanks, get you to speak a little bit about what uh, what part your family and your family's considerations had in your uh, as you worked through this transition process. A great question. Uh, thank you so much, Captain. Um, again, the uh, the family component was like you said. You you make the decision uh, to get out. I did not want to go. Uh, you know, to back-to-back sea duty uh, with young children. So uh, that was my uh, decision. But again, the uh, family component was, is like, you've got to take care of, you know, two babies and a wife at the time. Uh, how do you do that? And again, you have to pick up the phone and call everybody you know. Um, and I went back to my college uh, and uh, I had relationships from my college. I was in London. Uh, so I'm overseas. Uh, trying to transition back to the United States. And, uh, you know, at that time, 2000, uh, you know, what's going on? It's an internet boom. And so, you know, had made some contacts with my college and then they flew me back to Connecticut for an interview, hired me on the spot. And, you know, the rest was history, right? You know, you think you've, you've hit the lottery. Um, and then what happened in 2001, 9-11, okay? And your whole plan changed again. So it's like, wow, I've moved my family to the most expensive area in the world uh, in Connecticut. And now 9-11 happens and they're laying everybody off. But what did I do when I got to Connecticut? I joined the reserves. And then I got the call from Florida that they were standing up a helicopter squadron in the reserves. So now I'm in Connecticut and I get to come to Florida on the weekend to fly. My goodness, what a miracle. Because being able to do that reserve duty in Florida, then someone said, hey, we're looking for a subject matter expert uh, for this uh, defense contractor. And I'm like, a subject matter expert? What is that? Oh, for H-60 helicopters. I'm like, well, that's what I flew. So I guess I'm a subject matter expert. It took five minutes for us to decide to leave Connecticut and go back to Jacksonville, where we had bought our house back in 1994 and kept it. And uh, so, again, those relationships and those decisions, like you said, you have to look at the family. You have to take care of them first. Um, But you cannot uh, be shy, like uh, everyone has said, to reach out, find that network, go back to that college, and you know, whoever it does, you will never know how it ends up if you don't ask the question. So again, thank you for the question. So I do have a question. Um, you, at some point you decided you were going to go and start your own business. So kind of walk through that, uh, that thought process. And then some of the, some of the considerations, even uh, setbacks? Thank you for the question. Again, to uh, I'm working as a subject matter expert in Jacksonville, Florida for a small defense contractor. I'm on a two-year contract. Now, think about it. You've just spent 10 years. I've just spent 10 years in the Navy getting a paycheck every two weeks, and now I'm on a two-year contract. 
And everybody at the company is like, Andy's doing a great job. You're doing a great job. But after two years, the contract came to an end. And they were talking, Andy's doing a great job, but how are we going to cover Andy? So they were about to lay me off because the contract period of performance uh, was two years. And at the end of two years, a, a private company says, thank you for your service. Uh, goodbye. Good luck. And I hope you find another job. Instead of doing that, I started a Herald and Associates on paper. And the next week, instead of them firing me, they promoted me. And so I got a promotion, but I never forgot the feeling of almost being laid off. And I said to myself, I will never have that feeling again. So I decided after being in the industry for two years that I should, you know, try to jump out here and start my own thing. Now, 2003, while on paper I had an LLC, I had a day job. I was in the reserves flying on the weekends. I was getting my master's degree, getting my MBA, and I was starting this company. So, you know, it may sound sexy to go out there and start your own company, but my family could care less what I was doing because they were like, as long as we're eating and there's a roof over our heads, I don't care what you're doing. So, uh, Again, uh, I started the business, I stayed in a day job for four more years, and then the, the company got bought. The, the primary company that I was working for got purchased, and they moved out of what is called uh, the small business category, they moved into the large business category, and they needed a small business partner. And they knew I had started my business. And so on a Friday, I resigned from the company, and on a Monday, they subcontracted me back my job uh, as a project manager um, for curriculum development. And that was the fuel, that contract, that subcontract, because of that relationship with that company, because they recognized my ability to market and sell and uh, do business, they took a chance on subcontracting me back my job, which allowed me to uh, expand my business. It allowed me to actually have a salary have a contract for multiple years, and then go and expand my business. So again, it's, uh, I think the fear of losing my job motivated me so much that I'm still running. Like I said, 20 years later, I'm still running with that same fear that somebody could cut off a contract or cut me off or put me out of my house or, you know, all of these things. And that has fueled my know, ability to, you know, go out here and learn this business and learn how to do it and uh, essentially survive. Uh, but I'm in control of that survival versus, you know, being at the you know, whim of yeah, uh, being hungry and homeless is quite a motivator, isn't it? <laughs> it's a true motivator. And like you said, I don't, like I said, folks are like, okay, you've made it. You've done this. You're done now. I was like, yeah, I still sleep a little bit with one eye open because, again, just as easy as it comes, it can go. Or just as easy as that contract went good, the next one could go bad. Um, and so um, that's the, you know, the risk and reward of uh, being your own boss. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Awesome. And if you guys ever get a chance to hear Andy play, uh, first rate. So, um, Stephen. What questions do you have? Because the again, the purpose of this is to get you guys on the path and uh, connected. Thank you. Uh, and I, I just want to say thanks to Captain Barnes for your kind words and uh, and Derek for uh, the, the guidance you gave about LinkedIn. Um, I, I've had a LinkedIn profile for a little bit, uh, but I'm just now like starting to get in there and I've already got the premium account for the free uh, year and all that stuff. Uh, and I, I was able to get a class here on base uh, on LinkedIn that they, uh, apparently it's like one of the only uh, TAP uh, or military family readiness centers that offers this free LinkedIn class. And it's a full day dedicated to going through uh, trying to connect with people. Um, so I had not considered of reaching far back into my enlisted days to connect with people. 
And so I wrote all that down. I really appreciate that, that advice. Um, I, uh, I think there's just so, so much going on right now for me because I, I did not start planning for retirement until I was notified mid-January, you have to retire. Um, so, you know, right now I just completed TAP. So that, that admin check mark is complete. Uh, you know, not, not entirely though, because I'm still waiting on my capstone verification, which should happen this week by Thursday. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I need to get is my, uh, my medical um, separation physical. Uh, and, and I'm going to try to coordinate that once I get back up to Virginia. I think that that'll probably be a pretty quick process. Um, and, and on, on top of that is the, the VA disability claim. Um, I'm, I'm working on that right now. I, I contacted a VSO in Quantico uh, and I've already sent them my uh, medical records, my complete physical uh, record. I, I scanned that all in myself, sent that to them with the, with the dental and then all, all the electronic stuff that I'm able to pull from the records departments at the, at the clinic. Uh, uh, from uh, the, the records department, the radiology, the mental health, and uh, the dental um, digital files as well. So the VSO has everything. They just sent me an email back saying, uh, hey, the, the file sizes are too large. We don't want any delays in the processing of your claim. So can you reduce the files somehow? Um, and I I have been able to use some of the pro software that we have at the at the at CENTCOM to reduce the file size, but I, I don't know if it's reducing it enough. Uh, I think I've reduced it as far down as I, I can tell, um, but it it took it from like, it took like a 10 megabyte file down to like eight meg, megabytes. Um, so I, I think that's that's kind of a hurdle that, that I've got to overcome right now. And, and I'm not quite sure uh, what my VSO is talking about when it comes to, hey, your, your files might not make it into the system because they're too large. Uh, does anybody have any, any uh, recommendations on that? Yep. Find yourself somebody who's smart in the way of computers and break it up into Herrera 1, Herrera 2, Herrera 3, Herrera 4, Herrera 5, okay. and send them individually as pieces. Maybe do it chronologically from year umpty frats to umpty frats. But what he's saying is back in the day, when I sent in my VA claim, I, and, and I'm not exaggerating here, my file, hard copy paper was about nine and a half inches thick. And I put it in a, a 10 inch binder. That's what got sent forward. I sat down with the individual, my VSO was a, uh, Disabled Veterans of America, DVA rep. And I'm telling you, don't rush that process. Be very meticulous. Be very exacting. Don't let them rush you through that physical. Anything in your record that you might have the least concept is important. It's important. Every sick call, every sprained ankle, every twisted knee, Every broken fingernail, I don't care what it is, you make sure it gets documented in that final physical. Because 10 years from now, when there was something you didn't know you had that was documented in your record, you can still go back and get that for consideration. I'm telling you that as a 100% rated, disabled, permanent and total veteran. <laughs> and I'm telling you that the financial compensation as well as the greatest one is I pay no property tax as a 100% rated veteran. I cut my mortgage in half. So it took three tries to get to 100. First try was 40, second try was 70, third try was 90. And finally, after 10 years, I got my final 100% rating. And that was because I got my hard copy medical record and I made two complete um, Xerox copies of it. They tell you you're supposed to turn in your original to wherever for St. Louis record keeping. I gave them a copy. I still got the original orange cover on my medical record that okay. I wasn't going to surrender to anybody. I was never going to, when I PCS moved, I went to the hospital, checked out my record and hand carried it to the next duty station because I'd heard the horror stories about 
them losing your record in route. I wasn't going to allow that. And yeah. therefore, I still have the original hard copy with all the right signatures and whatever else. Uh, that might be extreme, but hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm living proof that it can pay off. That's a very important process. Don't drop the ball on that one. Thank you, sir. Hey, Tom. Tom Barnes, Chile. Uh, so, how, how did you how did you manage giving them a copy? I mean, did they not realize that? Because um, I'm curious about it at this point in, in stage. I, I know that I, I, I you know I, I currently have digital copies of my medical record. I still want to obtain my actual record, but I'm uh, I'm kind of curious what the repercussions would be if I took my record over. Well, I'll tell you, it's different for you guys now because you got digital copies. Back in the day, all there was was paper copies. They couldn't reproduce if they lost them. And I, and I had a classmate who PCS'd from Pensacola to his first duty station at Moffett Field, and it got lost in the transit. And unfortunately, that was early in his career, and it wasn't that much in there, but his pre-commissioning physical from the Naval Academy, his first NAMI physical from Pensacola and those kind of things were lost forever. Um, so the good news is you guys got digital now. So if you go buy medical records, they'll put it on a CD for you. Yeah, they're not even taking the, the hard copies anymore. Everything has to be uploaded. So you don't have to worry about uh, handing over your, your hard records. Now, if you have some hard records from before the digital age, um, I would try to get my hands on that unless they scan those in and you have a complete digital version of your record, you're in good shape. Because I, I have, I want to say it was 2007 or eight, they started digitizing. And, and therefore I have the CD version with all the digital records on it. But before that, now I retired in 2010. So all there was was paper copies up to that point. What I would, uh, what I would offer at this point for uh, both you, um, Stephen and Chili is essentially you, you need to spend probably like 50% of your time combing through your record. Yep. And then depending on what it is, um, go and be seen and then have it documented. If it's if it's like a scribble or something like that, but the the key is um, the documentation that supports whatever you're going to claim. And then once you get on the other side, then essentially you're gonna be seen by the VA and they're gonna refer back to that. And, you know, it's not one and done. So, you know, at any point you can always go and be seen because um, face it, we're all broken. It's just a matter of how much. And even um, zero, is still a rating and that's, that's right. important for other benefits and so the key is the 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 focus on your record because before you wanted to i know as an aviator it's like i want to stay up right so um yeah 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 don't write that down because <laughs> that's gonna put me in a down status yes. um, and, and i so think they made I spent, that i spent the last what, four months in Hawaii, going to different medical appointments um, to basically support the documentation in my record. And, and Chili, I looked at it from this perspective, is I was retiring. What, what were they going to do to me because I kept my original medical record? I figured the worst could happen was they would send me a letter saying, we need the original, you gave us a copy, and then I would send it at that point. That hasn't happened yet. That was 2010, so I don't think they care. Copy. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like to share uh, some a little bit of update with the digital system and and what I what I went through. Uh, so you go up to the records department at the at the hospital or the clinic, and they've got a sign there that says it's going to take a minimum of 30 days to for you to receive a digital copy of your medical record. And so I asked them about that. I said, hey, I, I understand, uh, you know, there's some delays here. What's the reason behind that? And uh, they told me that uh, that's because they have to take the physical record and scan everything into a digital file. 
and that takes time. It's just a, a clerk in the back doing it. And so that's why it takes that long. And so I said, hey, uh, can I just check out my physical record and I'll do it myself? And they said, yeah. And so I got that done in about three hours at, at work after hours. Uh, yeah. Got it all scanned into digital format and got it uh, onto my file system on my work computer. And then I said, what about the digital files that, that you guys have on record, like the Alta record, the Genesis record, all the digital stuff and the digital notes that the doctors have. And they're like, oh, we could send that to you today. Yep. We'll DOD save it to you. And so I've got it all. I've got all the digital copies of my physical records and the digital records all in one day, just by trying to figure out if I, how I can do it myself. Well, there's another way that works too. In, in my case at Bethesda, there was about a 75 year old lady named Mrs. Williams who did the scanning a box of Giardelli chocolates, and I had mine in record time as well. So there's lots of different ways to skin that cat. <laughs> so one of the best pieces of advice that I got, um, you know, if you do, do you guys know what you want to do, you know, next? So I'll tell you, I'm, I'm on a path of discovery right now, um, trying to understand who I am, trying to understand my strengths and weaknesses, what would be best for me to do. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you look at this and since, since I've been 18, since 18 years of age, uh, it's been nothing but Navy. And so I, I realized that uh, entering college, there were some sacrifices that I made. I, I, I you know, uh, told myself that there were things that I could no longer do that I wanted to do uh, coming into the Navy. So the things that I enjoyed as, as, as a part of life, I let those things go. And so now I'm, I'm trying to figure out, hey, who are you now? Yeah, I've got all this Navy experience, but there's some things that I, I need to look at for myself to try to figure that out. And so that's where I'm on. That's where I am currently. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm on a path of rediscovery I say, hey, who is who is Chili Mac? What is he? What does he like to do? What is he? What is he into? Uh, what's going to provide him uh, a, a a long lasting life of happiness? Because money's not everything, but you want to make sure that you're you're happy at the end of the day. Um, but you know, uh, money's important. And and on that note, uh, this question I, I asked to to Andy is, did you ever find yourself where you experienced a financial gap? Um, you know, you, 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 you earning a paycheck, but then, you know, how quickly did you transition to that? You didn't miss any money over. Uh, Tilly, thank you for that question. Uh, again, I think that was part of my uh, calculus with regards to, uh, starting my own company, meaning that I did not ever miss a paycheck, um, because, in planning to start the business, I started it. And, and I told everybody I was working on that because I didn't smoke, you know, I did it on my cell phone breaks, right? So I was working for a company and then doing these things, you know, trying to work my company on days off or a cell phone break. And so when the company, when I resigned on a Friday and the company subcontracted back to me on a Monday, there was no gap in, in pay. Um, because again, I, I came at it from a different vantage point uh, coming out after, you know, 10 years, I didn't have a retirement. So I had no backup. I had no, uh, you know, savings. I mean, you know, if you're married with two kids and a lieutenant, <laughs> you're, you're broke. <laughs> I mean, you're, that's just a fact uh, at the time. And so, um, I didn't have, I couldn't, uh, you know, risk, if you will, that gap. And so uh, that's why I remained uh, with the company until I could essentially walk out, right? Like cross the bridge uh, to the next path. Um, so hopefully that, that answers uh, your question. Like you said, if you have savings, which you know, like you said, if you're leaving after 30 years, you, you have accumulated uh, a few dollars 
and cents and some assets and you know you may have some time to uh, think about you know what you don't have to take the first thing but like i said i was working the day job started the business and in the reserves so i was looking for probably three more checks to <laughs> keep everybody fed over so so one of the things i wanted to share uh, especially for you there chili is best piece of advice i got was um you know, you got to imagine a Venn diagram, you got three circles. And then as you do your discovery, you're um, filling in each of the circles. So uh, one circle is location and lots of factors that will um, determine where you want to live. You know, maybe you got school age children, so that will kind of limit your location. Um, and then occupation. So what is it you want to do? I didn't know what I wanted to do after I got out. I knew what I didn't want to do. And one of the benefits of this group is we've got profit, nonprofit, government, academia, you know, entrepreneurs. And so you've got uh, people that you can talk to to say, hey, things to think about. But, you know, the occupation, now that you're on phase two, you can actually do what you want to do. The other circle is this idea of compensation. So in order to put you at ease, you will get a job and you will get paid. Uh, maybe not as much as you think. And that's where we come in because that compensation is actually your whole worth. And um, I can tell you from personal experience, just working with mentors, um, that initial offer, um, working with my mentor and then the counter, you know, that made a difference of $50,000, you know, so that's, that's real money having the discussion, um, to know your worth and it's not okay. 06 to 06 pay with, um, you know, healthcare and other things that, aren't necessarily pay, uh, but it's benefits. So you got to get that compensation. Uh, and it, it's it's really for both of you, um, that experience, those hard skills and the soft skills, uh, that's that's valued in, uh, in uh, business. And so I can tell you, you will get a job. Um, the question is, is it the one you want? right for the for the time being so this transition isn't one and done you know i'm i'm 14 months out in the same company i've gone, already gone through my second title so the good news is i still have a job <laughs> and uh actually got more people more responsibility and so you know that's one of those and you'd be surprised at other people in the company that have no prior service experience and you're like what the but that's the that's the x factor that you guys bring and you know if you look in the chat our resident magician mike francis put a link in there to the uh, moa website which is just one of the many resources that we count on there's navy mutual there's moa etc but i clicked on the moa.org and, and man, it took me right to the fact that if you look tomorrow, you can register for MOA's virtual career fair, March 8th from 1130 to one o'clock. How timely is that? So there are resources that we can help you find. There are resources you can find on your own, but these uh, career fairs with, and as it states, one-on-one -on -one chats with military-friendly, veteran-ready companies seeking to help people like you. And there's a calendar full of those kind of events. And uh, um, I tell you, I've been a life member of MOA for quite a while. You know, more resources, you know, they're more than just transitioning resources. There's, uh, I mean, just a, a maraud of those. And one of our TAT team members is a, is a player in MOA, and I know uh, Biscuit is on on board with. Are you, are you MOA or are you uh, Navy, Navy Mutual? Mutual? Yeah, you're Navy Mutual, and they got. 
another maraud of resources to help veterans either transition or if you're complete with your transition, there's, I know there's, there's life insurance and a lot of other kinds of things on our investment opportunities. These things exist and that's why we exist is to help you find the resources you need to at least get another little piece of the pie. Our fireside chats, I mean, every single one that we've had, and Andy, you've been outstanding. Thanks so much again for, for what you bring to the table because most people don't transition the way you did. I, I where's, <laughs> I tell you what, I transitioned the worst way you could hope to transition. So Stephen, if you think that you're in a pickle, you know, I, I was a year from even thinking I was going to transition on a three-star admiral staff and one of my classmates walk up and, and point this lady towards me who wants to hire me without even interviewing. So there I go with an offer in hand, a, a pretty nice offer, almost matching my 06 pay over 31. And I walk into my boss saying, hey, I got this offer in hand, I'm gonna retire. I'm putting in my papers. He goes, you can't leave. You got another hour left, another year left on these orders. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I had a six figure offer here. What do you mean I can't leave? So it was harder to get out of the Navy for me than it was to get in in the first place. So everybody's story is a little bit different. You know, there was a, a biscuit in Hawaii trying to transition from out of CONUS. And to me, that can't be much more difficult. You can't go to interviews. You can't do face-to-face -face career fairs. All your mentors and mentees are five time zones away in DC. I mean, all of these stories, you can't make them up. So I applaud you for reaching out to the TAT and to NNOA and to gathering little pieces. And uh, LinkedIn is a great resource. There are a lot of other resources as well. Lots of other social, Facebook and hiring uh, portions of Facebook and everything else. But I'll tell you, um, we're proud of the fireside chat process that we generated because we've gotten excellent speakers and, and uh, Andy, we appreciate it. Yeah, um, Stephen, you. you had a question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Captain Barnes, again. Appreciate the, the insight. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of resources I'm discovering uh, as I'm going through this process. And one of, one of them I just discovered is the Onwards Opportunity program um, and I just got accepted into the uh, the March cohort for that I just got to get the approvals through my parent command and I just notified them <laughs> so uh, there's some challenges there They're, you know I'm probably going to get the stink eye like hey wait a minute uh, you just notified us about this and it starts next week so uh, I'll wait for them to respond tomorrow and, and see what they say um, you, you brought up, somebody brought up life insurance and I, I'm glad somebody brought that up because um, I've got a quick question about that. I know that I want to lock in a life insurance agreement before all my medical stuff gets, gets uh, solidified, uh, all the disability stuff. Um, and I've been talking to my financial planner about that my, uh, at, with Northwestern Mutual. And, you know, I think she's going to pitch me some life insurance options with Northwestern Mutual, but I know Navy Mutual has life insurance as well. And so is there, can somebody give me a little bit of info on Navy Mutual side and, and you know, what uh, the benefits are uh, with going with Navy Mutual vice uh, some other entity? Hey, Steven, on my screen, just beneath you is this person called Pat Lewis. <laughs> so I, I've been a member of First Command since six months after I got my commission in 1981. And, and the reason I like them is because you don't have to talk life insurance over there and investments over there and somewhere else. First command and first command reps to me are kind of one-stop shopping. They, they've got a little bit of everything in there. So yeah. that's my suggestion. Other folks might have different suggestions, but I, I like yeah, the Yes, we do. We, we do it all. And I've been a first command client myself for 31 years. Never thought I would uh, work with them. But the thing you want to do, Steve, um, so you can go to a first command office and I'm sure there's one near you somewhere because um, we're near where all of the military bases are. But what you want to do 
is you want to make sure you're looking at the, the fine print in whichever policies you're looking at. So if you're looking at one from, uh, you know, Navy Mutual or or who else, or with, with First Command, First Command can do a comparison with you with the other ones um, if you get a quote. So a lot of people look at the, the face amount that they're going to get and then the premium that they're going to pay, but you got to look at all the the details in, in the policy. Are you comparing apples to apples? And a lot of times people aren't. They look at, oh, the face amount is the same and the premium on this one is lower. Well, that might be because it doesn't have some of the same perks as the other one have. Um, so you just need to look at, you know, get a printout of what, what is being offered and what the small print is to make sure you're comparing uh, apples to apples. And like I said, First Command can do that for you. So you can look at Navy Mutual and, and somewhere else and then they, they can help you with that as well. There's a lot of shysters out there because I was about six months away from starting flight training in Pensacola and a guy came on board the Naval Academy and sold me life insurance that being a, a knucklehead 19 year old, I didn't know a damn thing about insurance. And as it turned out, I had an aviation clause in the insurance policy that says if I died in a military airplane, they didn't have to pay any premiums. Oh man. Yeah, be, be careful. <laughs> so even though you think you're behind, the fact that you're thinking about that, uh, that's probably a big a big consideration. You know, what, what are you going to do to replace SGLI? So. Yeah, and you do, you're right. You do need to do that before you get, turn in all of your VA stuff because you want to be as healthy as possible when you're looking for this outside life insurance. So you want to do that as, as quickly as possible. And then you want to be as broke as possible when you're trying to do the VA disability. So, you know, get the insurance in place first and then go through with the VA disability. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Good stuff. All right. So uh, out of respect for everyone's time, um, you know, I'm I'm happy to stay um, as long as you guys uh, need me. You know, one of the reasons why. Like I said, I'm I'm with the group is because of my experience and the personal benefit that I got from it. So I feel obliged. And um, you know, to Chile, um, never would have thought I would work with a nonprofit, but here I am. And so, <laughs> um, like I said, didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up because I've been institutionalized. Um, but uh, part of that discovery is well. I know what I don't want to do. And so that eliminated some choices and then opened up some other doors. So, um, Andy, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. Um, if you have any last words. Well, again, uh, Biscuit, thank you so much. And, and to uh, everyone this evening, thank you all so much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, again, I, I'm available. Uh, as Biscuit knows, you can hit me up by phone, text. Uh, you know, I uh, just got a LinkedIn request and uh, from one of the participants and uh, set, set them uh, up as a, a relationship. Um, one last thing I would like to say is that uh, just be mindful of uh, where you end up, meaning where where you live, uh, because cost of living uh, becomes a major factor uh, in your uh, building of uh, wealth and savings and um, you know happiness, right? So again, I would just you know don't disregard uh, where you accept that job. Again, like I did, I accepted that job because I needed one in in Fairfield, Connecticut. It's the most expensive area on earth. And uh, like I said, ended up coming to Jacksonville, Florida, which is, uh, you know, cost of living has gone up a little bit, but it is still, you you can, dollar goes a long way down here. And so it'll allow you to get to wherever you want on earth um, if you are mindful of your cost of living. So again, thank you all so much for a wonderful evening. I'm available. If you have further questions, I'm available to stay by and stay behind and uh, chat with anyone that uh, would like to talk. Thank you. All right. And we're always looking for uh, new members for the transition assistance team. So, um, Mike, you can stop the recording if you'd like, and then we can.
continue on. Have a good evening, everyone. All right.